General Grievous. This uh, introduction shot was important to George to make sure that we, we really made a nice dramatic reveal. And we went to a lot of trouble to, to get a, a nice, different look on Grievous. This face armor has got um, this sort of translucent quality to it. Grievous was always a bit of brain damage for us. We played around with different accents. We had dozens and dozens of people do tests for it. We never quite got the voice right till the very end. With General Grievous, I wanted somebody who was reminiscent, again, of what Anakin is going to become, which is a half-man, half-robot. In this case, Grievous is sort of 20% alien and 80% robot. Grievous, to us, was always this sickly character. And so this coughing that he has and this hunched movement that he has, for George at least, referred to sort of how this creature inside this droid wasn't fully working. The systems hadn't been perfected yet. It echoes what is about to occur with Anakin. Jedi scum. As a part machine, part life form. We worked on giving him a character for a long time, tested lots of different actors for the role, and finally I heard a tape by this one actor who was named Alan Smithy, which is the name that directors use when they take their name off a picture. And I liked this voice the best. It turned out to be Matt Wood, the ADR recordist and sound editor, and he did the best performance. I worked to build more character in with him because when we were recording, I happened to have bronchitis. And so we did a few takes where I just sat there and coughed. In that way, we sort of built this more interesting character. To give you a little sense of, you know, the fact that he's in that robot suit for a reason when he was obviously damaged goods, but I didn't want it to be like Darth Vader. I wanted it to be something slightly different. I didn't want to have that sort of artificial breathing sound. I just wanted to have somebody with asthma. It was a lot of fun to animate Grievous, quite frankly. I mean, you know, whenever we have an opportunity to animate something that has not been established before, and when we don't have to match into someone wearing a costume, the animators are really excited because we get to create all the mannerisms, all of the actions, and create the, you know, walks and movements. So it, he was certainly uh, a character that a lot of animators are requesting work on. <laughs> Time to abandon ship! One of the big issues behind Grievous was that I didn't want a, a big, powerful villain. I wanted a cunning, you know, almost cowardly villain who um, isn't super strong or super powerful, but at the same time, you know, as a good fighter, but not, I, I didn't want to get somebody bigger and stronger and more powerful than the other villains that we've had and keep, you know, going to the next level. I wanted him to be slightly more like the Emperor, you know, slightly more on the sleazy, behind the scenes kind of guy. That's why I set up the fact that he always runs at the end of every fight. He always gets away. The reason why Grievous is coughing in all these shots is, is explained in a Clone Wars uh, cartoon that, that uh, depicts the action that takes place right before Episode 3 starts. If I remember right, he gets into a confrontation with Mace Windu, who does a force choke to him that uh, results in him coughing throughout the whole first part of the picture. We didn't know exactly what Grievous looked like at the beginning, and uh, he was just evolved into this totally different machine. About three weeks before we were going to shoot it, George decided he would have four arms and four lightsabers. Obviously, we could handle two arms, and the extra two were difficult. We thought of a number of ways of doing it. We thought of sitting, he's very tall, so we thought of sitting people on shoulders. We thought of suspending somebody from the ceiling. And he wanted to have the sense that there's no way that Obi-Wan could defeat this creature. But as we can see, the Master Jedi knows exactly how to deal with this droid. Although he may have been trained by uh, Lord Tyrannus, he's no Sith, and he's no Jedi. In the end, we decided to just cut off two of his arms quite quickly. I work really closely with Ireland because they can save your butt at the end of the day. With Rob Coleman and John Null, we stay in touch. They get the footage of the test fights that I do, so they pretty much know what's going on 
anything they have a problem with that they'll ask me. There's much communication. From an animation point, it's, it was very challenging to figure out what to do with the other arms. Uh, truthfully, if you had four lightsabers, you should be able to overwhelm somebody with one. You know, even if you've got two lightsabers holding back his single, you still have two lightsabers available to slice him apart. Uh, but Grievous is never able to achieve that. <laughs> This close-up shot of Grievous <laughs> turns out to be one of the more computationally expensive shots in the whole sequence. Some of those close-up frames took 40 hours a frame to render. And originally this reveal of the four arms was to be kept completely secret until the movie came out. But I know it did make it out before the movie was released, but for us we were just sworn to secrecy when Grievous was to split into the four arms. We're always looking for something unique with these villains, and even though he's a He's a kind of slimy villain who runs. We wanted to give him some kind of extra feature, and the idea of his hands coming apart and having four laser swords instead of you know a double laser sword or some of the other opponents we've had uh, seemed like a, a really fun idea. Glenn McIntosh, the lead animator on this sequence, worked with Steve Nichols on this spinning blade sequence. George had, had described it as the, the moving propellers of a plane coming at Obi-Wan. Well, the trick part of this it was very hard to shoot because we have a stuntman being General Grievous, but obviously he only had two hands, and to develop a, a way of fighting where actually Ewan had to learn how to do this thing, and the stuntman did one section of one hand and the other section of the other hands to kind of give him a sense and an idea of what it'd be like to fight somebody with four hands. You know, four things, but it's still a kind of tricky maneuver. We we did end up cutting the extra two swords off pretty quickly in the sequence. This is one of those sequences that I wish I had been able to you know, include more of it. You know, the story sort of demands that we don't do more of it, but we had a lot of fun designing various pieces of this that uh, ultimately couldn't be shot. There's a lot in a script when you write a script that you have to keep monitoring and cutting things down to focus on where the story is. It's very easy to get sidetracked. You'll see in that shot, George asks us to put in that little beating heart just to give us a, another reminder that, that Grievous is part creature. And I also wanted to establish that, that Grievous was a, a life form for those that didn't quite get it in the close-ups. And this, by opening up his chest, it makes him more vulnerable when he's got the gun, So, because whatever was protecting him is now gone. One of the hardest things still to achieve in computer graphics is, is um, real phenomena like fire, smoke, water. Uh, so to have Grievous blow up like that was really cool. Once I got rid of Obi-Wan's uh, sword, I thought it'd be funny for Obi-Wan to use the staff and ultimately use the gun, the, the weapon that most Jedi sustain the most to kill the villain. It's the least likely weapon for him to end up. Jamie Wheelis and his team uh, worked on this sequence with Grievous, hand-to-hand -hand fighting with Obi-Wan. Uh, I love it when we can get a shot like this, where we've got a live actor holding on to a digital character. For me, it, it helps the illusion of of having a digital character interacting with a live actor. Here we've got a digital character grabbing on to a real person and we've done vice versa as well in this. And to me, if we do if we do it if we do it right, the audience just believes that both of these characters are alive and interacting uh, at the same time. Mostly, this was a play on a Jedi with a gun, which you don't ever see anywhere else. The idea here is that Grievous's internals are all kind of volatile, and like his internal organs are very flammable. And this idea of, of uh, getting shot and then kind of burning up from the inside. That was kind of fun to execute. This is actually a blend of a computer-generated character with real fire elements. They built what we call a mandrel, which is a, it roughly is the shape of the digital character. But then that's real fire, and they're compositing that together with a digital character. And to me, it just looks absolutely real.